Hello YouTube and welcome to another Moto Vlog coming at you from my couch in Sterling, Virginia as usual, huh? Today I am riding a bit of a different bike. This is the 2021 KTM 890R, uh, the Duke, I guess they call it. I don't know if that's an official name or not. Doesn't really matter. So I um, swapped bikes with my buddy who bought this bike um, a little while ago. Uh, it's broken in uh, and ready to rip. Although I gotta admit, I don't rip it super hard. I am not a journalist or professional motorcycle rider. I can get around the streets apparently and that's about as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> so if you're looking for how does the ABS work and how is it doing the wheelies, you know, I'm not your guy. I'm not your guy, friend. If you're looking at maybe your average Joe's opinion of how this thing feels, then maybe, maybe I'm your guy. More likely or not, I'm just gonna rant about stuff and you can listen or change the channel. So, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, I'm gonna make my video a little bigger so I can see what's going on. Since I am bad at Premiere Pro. There we go, all right. So, how to start with this bike. Um, when I first got on it, I'm so used to riding, you know, my GS, my scooter, um, Bikes like that. Um, I've ridden a couple other naked bikes, uh, that being in a, an F, a first generation FZ09, as well as I, I believe it, I believe it would be a first generation S1000R. I think there's only two generations of that bike, but you know the the, the older generation. Um, this bike feels significantly smaller than both of those bikes when you get onto it. Um, I felt like there was just nothing in front of me. And, I, and I, I do think on those bikes, you do get a lot of the same sense of that, but this bike is definitely extreme in that regard. Funny enough, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that you can see the speedometer and the bike on the video. Cause I really thought like I was looking, like when I would look, I couldn't see anything. All I could see is just the road. Couldn't see the mirrors, the turn signals, any of the dash, you just see nothing in front of you. Um, Again, I think that's a, your typical naked bike thing I'm just not used to because it's been a long time since I ri rode one. But yeah, it's, I like it. it. It certainly gives you, you know, a more definitive connection with the road than you get on a, on a bike with a lot of wind protection, you know, like my GS where, you know, you're always looking through that windscreen. You always see it, you know, there's always a dash and the bars are even wider and the turn signals are high. Uh, so that would be my first thing. The second thing is how light this bike really feels. Um, I think it weighs a little over 400 pounds, so it's not, you know, actually the lightest bike in the world. But it's, it's, it's fairly low, I would say. It's not, you know, too tall, too, sh you know, too crazy. I'm just so used to bikes that are heavy. Funny enough, this thing's actually lighter than my scooter, so it just feels light to me. Um, the bars are pretty interesting. Um, again, I think they're pretty naked, typical naked bike bars, but yeah, they're, they're not as wide as you might expect coming from an adventure bike. They are more narrow, but they are, of course, significantly higher, wider, more ergonomic than, say, like a sports bike. Um, the mirrors work well. Uh, the bike doesn't really vibrate much. It's very smooth. I did not play with the electronics really at all. Um, the owner of the bike put it in road mode and I'm not exactly sure the other settings. So um, electronic wise, I think it's just normal traction control and all that. This bike does not have electronic suspension. It has uh, fully adjustable suspension, which was set up the way it came from the dealer. So I, I, and I don't know what that exactly entails in terms, you know, I don't think my um, the owner of the bike, like, you know, dialed it out and then dialed it back in to see how many clicks were on each thing or anything like that. Hmm, what else is there to say? Um, the bike has a factory quick shifter, up, uh, up and down quick shifter. So, you know, quick shifter up, auto blooper down. Ugh. A, lot of, a lot of words to describe that, but yeah, um, the quick shifter works pretty well. What else we got going on? The brakes are very uh, light. A light touch makes a big impact with these brakes. 
Uh, the rear brake has a lot of feel, which is nice, but the front brake has feel, but it's very sensitive. Um, wheels and tires, I believe it comes with some fairly aggressive Michelin tires in this case. I don't think they're like the Pilot Power RS. I think they're the ones that are the more road oriented and less track day, which is probably for the best. Um, and I think I'll start there. So with the tires, um, the, the tires feel really, really good. Um, the suggested PSIs on this are a little lower than you'd get on a big bike. I think, I think the owner said it was like 33 front, 35 rear was the suggested PSIs. Not really something you'd notice too significantly in this case compared to just running like 3642. It felt really good. Uh, no kind of sl sluggishness on churn in, but still, you know, a lot of confidence. I, I was not cornering very hard or really doing anything to push this bike around. Um, I think that, you know, when you're riding on the street primarily, having those track day tires is kind of dumb um, because those track day tires are designed to be hot. You know, they make the most grip when they're nice and warm, whereas these street tires have the ability to, you know, handle the cold and the wet and this and that just a little better. And yeah, I think what you, what you would notice if you were to take these tires on the track is, yeah, maybe a little less grip, but more importantly, they're going to wear out really fast on the track. Once they do get hot, they're not, they're, that temperature window is, is not going to be as high as with, you know, like a power RS or whatever. And these will wear out real quick. So I think that was a good, uh, good choice. Then we can move on to the suspension. The suspension feels amazing with the stock, you know, dealer. I don't know if, you know, if the factory sets it or the dealer sets it. I think the dealer ends up setting it based on the factory settings. It feels great. Um, I would say I'm maybe 200 or so pounds, maybe a little more with, with my full gear, helmet, all that. And it worked really well. Um, it was nice and stiff, uh, really nice damping. Um, yes, a little, you know, compared to the GS, you're not getting that plushness. And if you hit a big bump, you're gonna feel it pretty strongly, but it's not bad. It's not like uncomfortable in any way. Um, when you look, beyond you know the suspension components and you look at the chassis and the geometry of the bike i think this is the greatest feature of this motorcycle um the geometry there is just a level of stability and instability um that makes this bike amazing to ride um for anyone who doesn't you know ride a lot of bikes or isn't that experienced um Bikes usually, uh, I would describe a lot of bikes, their, their handling characteristics by their by their stability or, or lack of, of, of such. So like, for instance, a bike like my R1200 GS is not a very stable bike. It is quick to turn and change direction. It just is very little input on the bars results in a lot of direction change from the motorcycle. And going even further, if you were to get on, say, like a dirt bike or a supermoto or something like that, you would notice that even even further, that like it takes very, very little to make the bike change direction very rapidly. This bike is a little more in the other direction where it is a more stable bike. Uh, the bike likes to track straight and it requires a little more than compared to the GS, it requires a little more pressure on the handlebars to result in a, you know, change of direction. Uh, the upshot to that is when you're going at higher speeds, the bike feels more, I don't, I don't like using the word planted. That's not really the way I describe it. The bike feels more stable. It feels like it's going to hold its line better, even though you may be a little jittery, you may not be giving the bike the perfect 100% best inputs of all time, the bike is still gonna track the way you want it to with less precision on your end. But you can go further with this. If you were to get on, say, a Super Sport, like, a, like an S1000RR or, you know, an R6 or any bike like that with, you know, ra like a race bike, those bikes are very, very, very stable because on a lot of racetracks, there is a lot of very high speed cornering where you are literally going around corners at well over 100 miles an hour. 
you want the bike to really hold your line. And the idea is you have to be very deliberate and literally, yes, forceful with your inputs on, on, on a race bike to make it, you know, change direction quickly. All of these bikes can do the same thing. You know, you can do everything on an S1000RR that you could do on like a 125 Supermoto. It's just a matter of ease and of how much force and how much skill it requires to do these things. Whereas something like when you're doing, you know, Moto Kimkana parking lot stuff on a 1000cc superbike, it takes a lot of force into those bars. It takes maybe a lot of body position and just a lot of work and thought in deliberate action on your end. Whereas again, on like 120cc supermoto, it just, you, you almost you almost just will the bike around without even really putting any force into it. Um, so this bike is, I would say is squarely in the middle. It has this very stable and secure feeling while also not requiring a lot of pressure or input. It's really, it's got this great sporty feeling and I really enjoyed it. The, it, it. When you combine that with the extremely high quality of the suspension, excuse me, the extremely high quality of suspension, the handling of this bike is second to none. It is, in my opinion, the best handling motorcycle I've ever ridden, bar none. And this is for the street. I mean, this is this is a road bike. I wouldn't want to drop it or crash it. It's gonna. It's not gonna take me dropped all that well. Um, maybe better than a super sport, but that's not really saying anything. Um, so next, let's talk about the engine. We'll finally get to that. Um, I wanted to leave that a little later because while the engine on this bike is absolutely amazing, and, and is, I was shocked by how how good it is. I don't think it's the party piece of this motorcycle. The the chassis and the suspension and the geometry and all that, that's the that's the star of the show. The engine is there to complement the handling of the bike and not the other way around. For instance, like on a Super Sport, the Super Sport, the engine's the star and then everything else is there to, to make the engine do, do its thing. This is not, this is not that. So, yeah, we got, you know, an 800, 900, whatever, 890 cc or so parallel twin. Uh, from what I've heard, it makes about 120 horsepower and it revs to 9,500 RPMs. If you know much about the R1200 GS, those are very similar numbers to the R1200 GS, but this bike is, you know, over 100 pounds lighter. It has uh, a little shorter gearing. This bike, the engine feels very powerful on this bike. It, it's, I would say when you're, when you're going on it, I didn't show any videos of me going on it. I didn't really get that on it, but it feels very similar to a 600 um, in terms of just overall power. And I would say on the street, when you're on a road like this, or on the roads I've been showing so far, what you'll notice is that this bike feels more powerful than the 600 because on say something like an R6, Jixxer 600, a bike like that, they don't really start putting power down to the ground until you're going above 40 miles an hour unless you're slipping the clutch. Whereas with a bike like this, this bike starts putting power down on the ground when you're going 25, you know, 20, 25 miles an hour in first gear. So you have a lot of, you have a lot of usable power in addition to having a lot of top end power. Now, with that said, will this beat a, an S, will this beat like, you know, a 600cc super sport in a drag race? Eh, I don't think it will. Will it beat a bike like that in top speed? No, never in a million years because this doesn't have fairings or gearing. Will this thing do faster lap times? Say you put a professional rider on this and then you put a professional rider on a uh, Jixxer 600. Well, it'll do faster lap times on say like Summit Point Maine or even Summit Point Shenny. This will, or the, 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 the 600 will. This is not a faster bike than a 600 in any, you know, real measurable way. Now where this is faster in a sense would be Funny enough, I come up right here in this sense. When you're on a road like this, a nice twisty road, honestly, a good high level rider will ride a bike like this faster than a super sport because it's just easier. 
it's more confidence inspiring to ride a bike like this than it is to ride a super sport on a tighter, slower road. Because again, the bike is less stable. It is easier to turn. It has more low end torque. It just feels more fun, more lively. Um, and with that said, I, I want to compare it kind of to my my long ago experience on an FZ09. Um, I have heard that this bike is compared to that, and I can see why. Although I think a more apt comparison, honestly, would be to something like uh, an FZ07 or a uh, maybe an Aprilia RS660. Yes, this bike makes 30, 40 more horsepower than those bikes, but they're all twins and they all weigh about the same. This bike just happens to, you know, have, you know, a much more powerful engine and much better suspension. Um, well, not, maybe not than the Aprilia, but certainly, well, yeah, definitely than the Aprilia and uh, certainly the FZ07, MT07. I mean, this just, the bike's just amazing. And you can see I'm not really going fast, but even going this kind of speed, it's just so much fun. The bike gives you this level of confidence and just joy that I haven't really experienced on another motorcycle. I think I've never ridden a supermoto, but this is like a giant supermoto that's set up super well. Like this isn't like, oh, I took a, a 450 dirt bike and slapped some, uh, you know, slick tires on it. No, no, no. This would be, I took a 450 dirt bike, put some slick tires and, you know, cast wheels, not those spoked wheels, and I put amazing suspension that's set up for the road and not for, you know, the dirt. And I gave it, you know, two and a half times the horsepower almost, or, you know, double the horsepower. That's kind of what this feels like. It is, yeah, but it's not, uh, it's not as twitchy as a bike like that would be. It's not as, you know, quick to change direction as easy. But with that said, when you're doing higher speed cornering, this feels better and then this thing just I mean when you're going fast on this bike 80 90 100 miles an hour this just feels great it, it it feels like it has no problems going high speeds and that was a problem I remembered having with the FC 09 was that it just didn't let it just didn't seem like it wanted to go fast it didn't feel stable at those speeds and I think the reason this feels better is it has better suspension and it has a steering damper. Oh my God. Who would have thought that a, you know, short wheelbase naked bike with a bunch of torque should have a steering damper. Wow, the humanity, right? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so I can't say enough good things. So compare this to the, to the F, uh, to, I'm sorry, to the S1000R, the naked S1000. I say, I like this bike significantly more. Um, it feels a lot lighter. It feels a lot easier to turn and just more nimble and just more joyous in a sense. Like the S1000 Single R is such a serious bike. Oh my God. It just, that bike feels like ferocious and just like a lot, this just ridiculous. It's so powerful. It's so heavy compared to this bike. And it just, it, it feels so stable and smooth and like all these things. Now this bike just feels more raw and just more like, here's a bike to go out and just have fun and just like carve corners. Don't, you don't need to go 150 miles an hour. You don't need to be an insane person. You just chill and this bike likes going slow. It doesn't get hot. It's, it's all plastic and it's not like, oh, look at me, I need to look really good and sound amazing. Now, this bike does sound amazing, I'm not gonna lie. I think this bike sounds better than a uh, than an in, the most inline fours. Um, I mean, the S1000 single R sounds amazing too, but this bike sounds better in my opinion. It's just, especially at low RPMs and low speeds. I'm all over the place here with this. Um, I think the ergonomics on this bike are really nice, especially compared to the FZ or the S1000R. Those bikes have nice ergonomics. This is better. Um, the seat on this bike is quite hard, which isn't a, really a big deal because you are leaned forward. Um, the seat uh, has a nice level of like uh, abrasive abrasiveness to it that holds you in place very well. Like where you sit, even under hard braking, where you sit, that's where you're gonna stay. 
Um, it also has a really nice taper to it. Like a lot of bikes nowadays, of course, have this, but this one is really, really, it seems like it was designed very deliberately so that when you're sitting up against the tank, the seat is very narrow. And when you sit back, the seat is very wide and, and the way it tapers from narrow to wide is really ergonomic. I found myself for comfort, like in a situation like we're looking at right now, I found that uh, for comfort, I was really kind of sitting in the middle of the seat not too close to the front or the back. And then of course, when I was trying to ride a little more aggressively, I would I could e very easily sit all the way back in the seat uh, and it would give me a nice ergonomic position. Um, as with any stock road bike, I feel like the foot pegs leave a lot to be desired. Um, uh, there, I've never ridden a stock, I've never ridden a bike with stock foot pegs that I actually thought were, you know, good, as good as the aftermarket options. Uh, and these are no different. They're fine. They work well. Um, if your feet get wet, yeah, yeah, they're not going to grip very well. Um, but with that being said, you know, they're not too wide. Uh, they're not too high up. Well, that's rear sets, but they're, you know, they're, they're not, they're, they're comfortable because they have the, all that rubber padding, which dampens and reduces the vibrations, you know, from the bike. So speaking of the engine and the vibrations, I didn't really notice a whole lot. Um, Maybe at like really low RPMs, you know, 2,500 RPMs or less, you, there was a little bit of vibration. I don't know, at higher RPMs, maybe there was, but it, coming from a GS, it's it's probably the same or less. Um, so let's get to the next big thing, and that'd be the brake lever feel, or the brake feeling. Um, apparently this bike has like this adjustable brake level, lever force multiplier thing. I don't know the technical name for it. I, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't look it up. I wanted to, but I kind of forgot before I started recording. I'm not going back. When you apply the brakes on this bike, they are very sensitive. And I, what I mean by that is that low levels of physical force on the lever result in high levels of like braking power. So you don't have to apply the brakes very with very much force to, re, to, to stop very quickly. Um, and with that said, that doesn't mean that there's no feel. The brakes have a lot of feel and a lot of force with a little bit. It, it's very interesting to me and I've never ridden a bike. Even the RC390 with aftermarket brakes was not quite this sensitive. Um, I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. I think the brakes on this bike are amazing. And I think if I were to, if this were my motorcycle, I would strive to really master this kind of sensitive braking, especially considering this bike supposedly has a very, you know, robust and modern ABS system. Having the ability to go from zero to, you know, having the ability to get on the brakes very quickly would be nice, but I would love to get in a parking lot and practice with these brakes a lot more. I was, I was trail braking, but I always had in my mind while I was doing it that, you know, be much more careful than you normally would be. Because if you sneeze while you're trail braking, you know, that could be a problem, maybe, I don't know. Um, it is adjustable though, so I believe if you were to adjust it, and I'm not sure, I think you can kind of do it, maybe not so much while you're riding, but maybe if you're like stopped, you can adjust it or just hop off the bike real quick. I don't think you need any tools, although you maybe need to take your gloves off. I don't know, I don't know. But if you were to adjust it, I heard that it would be significantly less, you know, sensitive to, to that. And it would be more like, you know, a normal bike where you, you in terms of how much pressure results and how much braking force. I don't know. I mean, they were nice. I, I did enjoy the brakes. They were just not what I normally was used to. Um, I told the owner of the bike, you know, if you're going to let other people ride it, let them, you know, warn them a little bit about how sensitive the brakes are because it's not something you'll get like, oh my God, like I think the opposite of that would be coming from like a, like a cruiser, like a, like an R18 or like a, a, a Harley cruiser. Oh my God. It's like the complete opposite of that. <laughs> Um, there is obviously, you know, these have conventional forks and there is some fork dive to be expected. Nothing wrong with that. I enjoyed the rear brake a lot. I thought the rear brake, on one hand, the BMW, my, my R1200 GS, 
uh, is very sensitive rear brake. And then on the other hand, I think about like the Pan America or whatever it is. Uh, and that is a very, uh, a lot of, you have to apply a lot of force on that rear brake. And this is sort of uh, more towards the GS, but more in the middle. Uh, it has a nice feel to it. You, I, I, it just feels right to me, the rear brake on this bike. It's really nice. Um, so yeah, I'd say overall the brakes on this bike are amazing. Um, maybe maybe takes a little getting used to though. So I don't have a lot of bad to say about this. Um, I did notice, and the owner of the bike um, actually mentioned right there. You notice how the, the display switches from like light mode to dark mode based on the ambient light. That's a little weird to me. I don't understand that. Apparently, there is no setting to just keep the bike in light mode or dark mode all the time. That's that's a little ridiculous to me on such an expensive, you know, twelve thousand dollar bike that you can't just hit a setting in the dash and say, just look, just stay in dark mode all the time. Like I don't need light mode. Because to be honest, I would. I would keep it in dark mode all the time. It doesn't make sense. Was it distracting? Is it a big deal? No, it, it really isn't. Um, but that might be the only downside. So let me talk about the quick shifter a little. Um, you'd think, so I, I've ridden a 790 Adventure S, um, which is obviously in a lot of ways a very similar bike to this in terms of, you know, engine and transmission. Strangely enough, the transmission and the quick, sh I would say the quick shifter specifically, but also the transmission in a little way felt actually significantly different. Not like night and day, oh my God, it's completely different, but it was it was very noticeable. Um, so I'll start with the 790. Uh, that, the, the quick shifter on that bike has like no feeling to it or feedback. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but like when you press up, it just kind of goes up. There's no like clickiness, there's no notchiness. It just, there's no, there's, a, there's like no resistance. When you press up or even when you press down to activate the quick shifter, it, it's almost like just pressing like, um, it's almost like it's not even connected to the bike. The only way you know that it's shifted is that obviously it's shifted. You know, you hear and feel it in like, you, you hear the engine note change. That's it, you hear the engine note change and then as then you know it gets to the stop and, it, and you can't press up anymore, that's it. It's almost like completely smooth. And then the downshift is the same way. This bike has a notch, like it takes some force to press up and there's like, you know, the, it doesn't just move 100% smoothly. And to be honest, I kind of prefer this, a little more notchiness to it. I don't know why, um, that's probably coming from my GS, which is, I would say is quite similar to this, where there's a lot of positive feedback. Um, the owner of the bike said you do need to use some force to, to do the shift with the quick shifter. Uh, otherwise that you can get into a situation where the quick shifter, you know, blips, but it doesn't shift. And my GS is the same way. Uh, with up shifts and down shifts, you, you do have to, you know, you have to take a deliberate positive action with your shifts. Um, I would say the 790, or you know, the Adventure bike, I don't know if the 890 is the same way as the 790 or like this, but I would say the 790 Adventure S, the quick shifter is really designed for off-roading. And in, in that, it, again, it doesn't take as much force. And more importantly, it works really well at low throttle inputs and low RPMs. Um, like if you're cruising around at, you know, 2000 RPMs on the 790 and you, and you shift up with a little bit of throttle, it, it shifts pretty smoothly. There might be a little clunkiness because obviously it doesn't, you can't really roll off much. But if you were to, to do the same thing, which I tried on this bike, there is a pretty, you know, you do get pushed forward and pushed back um, because it is a little jerky. On the flip side though, and I never really tested heavy, RP, you know, heavy throttle shifting on the 790. I'm sure it's fine, I'm sure it's good. On this bike, it's amazing. It's smooth, it's 100% completely smooth. There's a great positive feedback to it. And oh my God, the noise the bike makes. It makes this amazing little poppy noise. Oh, it's so, I don't care if it's a, if it's smoother than the 790. It's, it makes you feel so cool. And I think that's the conclusion I'm gonna come to because wow, we've already killed, what, almost 30 minutes. And I, I feel like I've, I've barely even scratched the surface of this bike. To be honest, I feel like riding it, I barely scratched the surface of this bike. I didn't really get to ride it on the highway. I didn't do a whole lot of low speed maneuvering. Uh, let, me, let me cover that, the clutch feels great. 
Um, is it as good as the Pan Americas? Eh, it's, it's close with no cigar, um, which is fine because this isn't a, uh, this isn't an adventure bike. It doesn't need to have the world's best clutch, but the clutch is nice. Um, it, 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 it is light. I would say it's even maybe about similar weight, if not a little heavier than the Pan America. Um, the, the level feels the same. It just, it feels good. It's a great clutch. Um, and no, no complaints. Uh, the release point is where I like it, which is almost all the way out. So like, you don't have to pull the clutch to the handlebar. I, I It's not my bike, so I was doing that. But like, if this was my bike, I'd barely pull the clutch in at all. Um, you, Cause you don't have to. It basically is fully disengaged, like 30, 40% into the travel of the clutch. I love that. That's what you should have, in my opinion, for low speed maneuvering and things like that. Um, so great, I loved it. And I think that was pretty much the last thing. Yeah, the bars were good. Um, I didn't really use the electronics. The grips feel good. Everything about this bike feels premium, which is nice to see on a bike like this. Um, so yeah, I would say the ultimate feel of this bike, um, I would say much more than an FZ, much more than an S1000R. I almost feel like this bike, the, the, the feeling and the level and the way this bike makes you feel, I'd say the only bike that I can compare it to would be the Hyper Motard. But this bike is more powerful and lighter than that. So this is like a Hyper Motard, but like better. Oh, and it's more comfortable. So it's better in like every way than a Hyper Motard. So, I'm gonna go out and say like this bike makes me fit make me feel like a complete badass. It was tons of fun. It was comfortable Really powerful sounds great All everything works the way it should if not better This is one of the best bikes I've ever ridden I would put it right up there with the GS if I owned this bike I would have a very hard time getting rid of it I'll just yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say I was shocked. I was expecting to like it, especially because this is, I think the downside to this bike is it's very expensive. Um, I think out the door, this bike was, you know, it was a lot. I don't even want to say the number, but um, the owner, the owner purchased the bike. And then uh, along with the purchase price of the bike, they bought a full Akrapovich system, which sounds amazing. And they had the factory KTM Akrapovich tune which feels amazing. The throttle response on this bike is, is great. Is it as good as the GS? No. Is it as good as a Harley? No, but it's as good as any chain driven motorcycle I, I've ever ridden. It's smoother than the Pan America, 100% smoother than the Pan America, which was already pretty smooth. Um, yeah, this is as smooth as my R6, if not smoother. I did not try sport mode. I only tried road mode. I honestly am not a big fan of those sport modes where the throttle is super aggressive because I feel like that level of, of aggression can get you in trouble um, when you're trying to say accelerate on the side of the tire. Why do you need all that? It, it like jerks the bike really suddenly. Like if you're, I guess if you're trying to do wheelies and stuff, great, good, great grand. But if you're trying to ride around on the street, road mode, in, in my experience, on pretty much every bike is way smoother. So I didn't even try it, I didn't care. So yeah, I would say if you're on the fence about this bike, um, do yourself a favor and at least try it out. I think the problem is, is gonna be that apparently these things don't exist. Like, they're really hard to find, they are a super hot item. And also, I think KTM knows that people are more into like the adventure bikes than the Duke. Like when people go for the Duke, they go for the Super Duke, let's be honest. So I will take this. I don't know. I have ridden a Super Duke, an older one. Um, compared to an older Super Duke, this is a better bike. It's not as fast. It's not as refined. And that's why I like it. This thing is, this thing is tons of power, all the power you need. And it, it just feels so fun and lively and just it's not serious the super duke is so refined and smooth and just balls to the wall the super duke's the kind of bike where you'll go over 100 without realizing it but on this bike i trust me when you're going 100 on this bike you know it it's it's just hilarious in, in all the best ways like this is the bike you need for the road it's so powerful you can cruise on the highway at 90 miles an hour all day long no problem um, you can just be a complete hooligan if you want, or you can cruise around at five miles an hour. It doesn't get hot. It, it's just so amazing. Honestly, this is one of the best bikes I've ever ridden. 
It's not as, you know, insanely hilarious as a supermoto, I'm sure. But you know what? The trade-off for that is you can actually ride this thing all day because it's comfortable enough. It doesn't have a tiny little narrow seat like a supermoto would. It actually is comfortable. Same thing with a sports bike. This thing's way more comfortable than a sports bike. Is it as comfortable as a GS? No. Okay, but it's, it's honestly closer than you'd expect. It's honestly closer than you'd expect. So, I mean, yeah, you do yourself a favor. I think the, the comparison for this would be the Aprilia RS660, um, which obviously is a much less powerful bike. I'd love to ride that now to see how it compares. Um, the SC09, uh, the MT09 SP, which we don't even get in America, would be the comparison. But we don't get that here, so sorry, it might as well not exist. Anyway, so this is gonna be the end of the video. At this point, we uh, I think I've said everything I need to say, probably twice, I'm ranting and raving now. Um, we get stuck behind a Corvette at this point, obviously going very slowly, so yeah, get it. Stay safe, guys, and as always, think about your riding.